Can you fit a kitchen island? How the hell should I know? I'm not in your kitchen. If you've got 10 and a half feet by 10 feet, you can fit an island. Simple as that. Oh, that's not your kitchen? You have a window there, a door there. You have more room, less room. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three things you need to figure out if an island is gonna fit in your kitchen design. Why do you want an island? And I don't mean like in a spiritual sense. Why do you want the island? Do you want it as a showpiece? Do you want it for entertainment? Do you want it to eat at? Do you want gather around when you have parties? What do you want it for? In a kitchen, you do one of six things. You either store food, you prep it, she chop them broccoli. You cook it. This is where you separate the men from the boys. You serve it, you eat it, or you clean it up. Keep your station clear or I will kill you. So what is your island going to do for you? Is it going to give you more storage? Gonna, is it going to give you more counter space for you to work and to chop and to prep? Is it going to give you a space for a sink or for a cooktop? What is the reason why you want the island? Because islands cost and they cost in space because that clearance to get around an island. We have clearance, Clarence. For me, three feet of counter space or cabinetry. That's a closet I can put somewhere or pantry. That's valuable real estate that you want to consider when you make a decision to add an island. Number two is, do you actually have the physical space? So let's talk about what the industry standards are and what I think is appropriate for clearances. Or we have clearance, Clarence. Or for the flow, for you to be able to move around the island. Now the first one is 36 inches. Right here, this is 36 inches. That's with no drawers or doors opening. That's a hallway. It's not really generous though. National Kitchen and Bath Association recommends between 42 and 48 inches between the island and the perimeter cabinets. So that gives you room to open a drawer and walk past. I say err on the side of the 48. I wouldn't go with 42 because when you pull out drawers on both sides or if you pull out a drawer and you're standing behind it, you just don't have enough room. Your butt's gonna bump up against something. Give yourself a little bit more room. I have 48 inches between my stove and my sink so that I can stand at the sink and someone can pass behind me comfortably. And the last measurement is 60. 60 inches you need in order to sit and to have someone pass behind you. You need three feet to pass. You need four feet to be able to clear opening and closing drawers, doors, and appliances. And you need 60 inches to sit and to walk behind. Those are your clearances. Measure your space and see if you've got the room. 42 inches is what you'll see a lot as a recommendation between an island and the perimeter cabinets. When space is tight, you might have to do that, but it really is not the ideal situation. You wanna give yourself a little bit more room for the flow of your kitchen to work. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? The last thing you wanna think about is the size of your island. How big it is, how tall it is, how wide it is. So let's go through all of it. It's gotta be two feet deep. If you have no seating, if you want an island that's not gonna tip over, when Uncle Louie comes over and has a few drinks and decides to dance and boom. 24 inches is the minimum width. Six by 13, simple as that. That's the biggest slab I've gotten. If you wanna go bigger than that, you're gonna get a seam. But six feet, if I try and clean, uh, that's three feet right there. A little more than three feet. If I add another three, I have to walk around to clean it. So you wanna keep that in mind. So the length and the depth is gonna depend on how much room you have in the room itself. The height is gonna depend on what you want, what you plan to use it for, and your family. Now you'll notice I have a two-tier island. My dining room backs up to my kitchen. So when I have crap all over this countertop, that bar height hides the mess. The chairs are also more comfortable at that height. Most importantly, I was brought to life by Zeus. I live with two Amazons. They're over six feet tall, and for them to work at a 36 inch high countertop is uncomfortable. It's like humans, normal height people, working at a dining room table at 30 inches high. The 42 inch height gives them a more comfortable space to work at. You have an absolutely breathtaking hiney. How many butts can you fit? 24 inches is the rule. You can go as tiny as 18 if you've got kids or smaller stools. You want to think about and look at 
the stool specifications. This is a seven foot island. The initial stools I bought for it were these big old comfy swivel stools that were over 24 inches wide. We could only fit three. They bashed into the counter and the first person to sit down never got up. So we got rid of them and we've got four counter stools so that I can actually sit down to eat every once in a while. It's gonna depend on the specs of your stool, who's using it, how often you plan to sit on it. The overhang gets less as you go up. At a 30 inch high countertop, you need 24 inches for knee space and your foot. At counter height, you need 15 inches because the angle's a little less. And at bar height, the requirement is only 12. Although I would recommend, like I did, to go measure your tall people because that's 14 inches deep. The rules are there to be broken. If you need design inspiration, check out my video on how to gather, organize, and store your information so that you can plan the perfect kitchen. If you found any of this useful, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. It's time to bone the chicken now.